Yeah. So last week we were talking about yes now the impurities of the mind. So we have to understand clearly how these impurities of the mind takes over and it causes the fear, anxiety, duality, conflict, depression, and a long list. So our master says that impurities of the mind has two factors. One is known as sankalpa in Sanskrit, and the other is the desire for happiness in the world. They have summarized it, but we will understand it in a little deeper way so that we can analyze and reflect upon our daily life. So the sankalpa in English means imagined happiness or projected happiness or sorrow, both. It may be a projected happiness or it may be a projected sorrow. In the midnight, someone knocks the door, projected fear. You see that? Projected happiness and projected imagined happiness, or whether you say projected or imagined. Sankalpa, that is a beautiful concept, which means the mind has a tendency to create imagined reality or projection based on our desires, fears, and conditioning. It is a mental process. It happens internally first, and then it appears on the surface. You look at your honey, and honey has a sad face. Now, he or she may be worried about something, but you have a projected, That is such a beautiful way to understand. So now we should, we have to understand first is that how this imagined, uh, imagined or projected happiness, sorrow, or the suffering enters into our life. It has many factors. First factor is the conditioning and the past experiences. Based on our past experiences, the way we lived our life, the way we expressed our thought, speech, and action in our relationship. So they are already accumulated in the mind. So they have a power of projection and imagined happiness or sorrow. Oh, don't disturb me. Don't talk to me. Give me a space. Based on psychological tendencies. First, you know, first factor, you can say that it is the past experiences. I have lived my life with constant irritation, reaction, blame, and complaint, say, for example, for 20 years. And do you think that, you know, those 20 years of your past impression will go away easily? So they create that imagined happiness or imagined sorrow, both. Psychological tendencies, these are known as the psychological tendencies. How many times I got upset, I got angry and hesitated in my life? How many times I evaded the response? Emotional responses are also accumulated in our mind. That also causes this imagined or projected, whether you say projected happiness, projected fear, projected anxiety, project. So first time, remember this, first time this projected or imagined happiness or suffering is created in our mind. Once this projection takes place, now where the mind is projecting? Mind is projecting in the world outside. 
what is the world outside it is projecting on people on events on situations on things so that projection creates a desire to seek happiness or avoid stress and suffering in our life take an example of the charlie uh, her house is caught on fire and now she has some fears house is controlled fire is controlled it is already a past but what what will i will do with the projected and imagined fear So I say, no, no, I will do meditation and it will happen. What will, what will happen to your past impression? You have lived with millions of projected happiness and projected sorrow. How you think that you can get out of that anxiety and the fear and the tension in just one minute when you have those impressions already present in your mind? Did you understand? Did you, do you have to understand that? What, if I feel anxiety, it has its past, and that past is already deposited in my memory bank of the mind. And I think, you know, I'm very good. I'm very happy. It doesn't work that way. If it works that way, tell me. Are you getting it? Are you understanding? So that is why we use the word sankalpa, imagined and projected happiness or sorrow, which has so that imagined and the projection on the world outside has created billions and billions of impression that is deposited in the storehouse of memory. So that storehouse of the memory creates a desire to avoid pain and to seek happiness from the world outside that is why we are seeking the happiness from the world outside so it has its deeper layers of the mind is working all the time <coughs> are you getting it say yes so once we understand this now we understand that what is the impurities of the mind? These are the impurities of the mind. What is the impurity? Imagined peace or imagined happiness or imagined sorrow or imagined suffering or imagined fear. My mind do not examine these imagined and projected fears or happiness or pleasure and without examination, I have a desire. I expected you to behave like this. This is also an imagined happiness. <laughs> uh, you see that? So our daily life, the way we think, speak, and act, 99% it is dominated and dictated by the imagined fear or imagined And one incident takes place, the mind with billions of projections put, gives the fuel to that fear, gives the fuel to that pleasure. So whether it gives a fuel to the pleasure, I get obsessed with the pleasure, it gives a fuel to my fear, and then wherever I sit, wherever I go, say, well, the incident of the Charlie took place, and now her mind her mind is obsessed with millions of the projections of the fear or anxiety and that is why it is difficult for her to meditate real life examples we are understanding is it, is it is it did that happen to her yeah Recently? Recently. How recent? How recent? Day before yesterday. So you have to understand. So you have to talk if you go, if you are going to talk to her, you talk to her 
way they thought, not of imagined fear or I am sorry, that is not going to work. I'm sorry. Well, we, we have a typical response. Can I anyhow understand? So Sankalpa projected an imagined happiness or sorrow and suffering or a fear and it creates a desire to avoid the fear and anxiety or to have a pleasure from the world outside so where the focus is focus is outside in the world where the fear or obsession is it is in my mind so if i don't look at my mind where the fear or obsession is nothing is going to happen nothing changes that is why once we are scared then we continue with the, that sense of the fear once we have a sense of pleasure from an object we get obsessed with it and they these are the impurities of the mind so how the impurities of the mind manifest in our daily life <coughs> That is what I think I discussed, but that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that impurities of the mind manifest and express in our my thought and speech and action is a fearful mind, as an anxiety mind, as a money mind, as a sheep mind, as a strong likes and dislikes mind, as anxiety and depression mind. So when we you categorize, you list in your life, make a list this week that how many different types of the mind you are, they, 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 they manifest in your life every day. <clears throat> oh, I have a fear mind. Oh, I have an anxiety mind. I have a money mind, sheep mind, rationalized mind. My mind is constantly rationalizing. Oh, no, 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 there is a still I have a fear because something happened yesterday it is happening because of the sankalpa the projected and imagined imagined sorrow imagined fear imagined pleasure whatever you want to say so now we have understood that these are the impurities of the mind can imagine fear come from previous generations no, from your past impressions, how you respond to a particular situation. You respond to a particular situation in discernment and dispassion, or you respond to a particular situation in life uh, in ignorance and delusion. That is the first layer. And the second layer, obviously, your past impression. Third layer is the impressions that carried forward from the last previous birth. But the first level, first level is do I respond to a situation, to a person, to a thing and relationship in ignorance or delusion or in discernment and dispassion? So that is the criteria of a seeker. If you are responding in discussion and discernment, fear is gone. If you are responding in ignorance and delusion, that very delusion is also a part of the imagined, imagined uh, uh, fear or imagined uh, happiness in the world. Look at it. The mind, because of the past impression, the projected imagination uh, is filled with the anger and the rays inside. Now you are going to respond. Suddenly, you recall what the beard guy told you, and you don't know I have to respond in discernment and discussion. What happens to your anger? Or you respond in ignorance and delusion. Oh, I have a right to be angry. You did something wrong. So you are carried away by your past impressions. You did not listen to the 
conscience, that is, conscience is your discernment and dispassion. So yes, and uh, you can say in that way, the first level is that I am a seeker, and if I am a seeker, and I now I have a habit of responding to the outer situations in discernment and dispassion, then there is no fear and anxiety at all. There is no challenge in situation. I know how to respond to that situation, devoid of imagined happiness or sorrow. So it means at that particular moment, I I acted out of the purity of the mind. And that is why I'm explaining you that you have these different states of the mind. So whenever you say, I'm upset, I have anger, I have reaction, I have strong likes and dislikes, I like this, what I did not get it, money mind, sheep mind, rationalized mind, strong likes and dislikes mind, cognitive biased mind, Oh, stressed and angry mind, all those mind, when we experience these different states, I have already told you the story, how the vicious circle is created. And one of them is also the fear. So the fear also, fear and the anxiety go hand in hand. So whether you have a fear of anything, that makes your body unsteady, and then it is challenging for you to do meditation. So the first step is to understand it clearly. Understanding is required. Fear is genuine or no. Fear is imagined or no. I have to understand whether the fear is imagined or projected. I have to understand again and again and again. I have to repeat these thoughts again and again so that I can find out there is a fear of the known, and there is a fear of the unknown. Tiger is in front of me, so it is a fear of the known. Then I know how to tackle it. But if there is a fear of the unknown, so normally the fear of the unknown is all about our imagined fear. Something happened yesterday. <clears throat> Now I carry forward. Why I carry forward that event of anxiety and the fear? Because of the sankalpa. I, I have, my mind has a habit of imagined anxiety and imagined fear. So that gives rise to a desire. So how to, how to control that, how to avoid that, how to avoid that. So that process I avoid by doing something outside, but the imagined fear is already living inside. How it can happen? It cannot happen. You can suppress it. You can take a pill and you can go into sleep, but it is not going to uh, treat your fear completely unless you, by knowledge, you remove the fear. First step is by knowledge, means by understanding, where is the root cause of the fear or anxiety or obsession I have to remove by intellectual understanding. And once your intellect understands, it says, yes, this is what is happening to me. So even after intellectual understanding, mind says, I still have fears then the practice works. So the knowledge and the practice both can work together. But if the knowledge is 5% and even if your practice is 100%, uh, as long as you are doing the practice, the fear and the anxiety will go away as long as you are into the practice. But once you return from the practice, after a few hours, the anxiety and the fear will take over you. Because that very understanding is not placed in the mind by the intellect. Because after a few hours, then the practice is just like a spill. I use the pill for a couple of hours, it will go away. 
but I have to understand. As such, I have to repeat one million times. I have understood there is no fear. It is an imagined fear. I must, I will not repeat this thought in my mind. Whatever has happened the day before yesterday or yesterday in the past is the past. I have to repeat it again and again in my mind. By understanding, not by force, not by caution. I believe you all are getting it. So moment I have a sense of the fear and anxiety, I have to see through the intellect that it is imagined fear and anxiety. I have to recheck, I have to understand it clearly. So by the intellect, 50% of that pressure goes away and the rest 50% is taken care by the practice. At a higher level of a seeker, when you are a higher level of a seeker, fear, oh yes, I had that impulse of the fear. And the higher level of a seeker recognizes that the real self does not have the fear. You need not to go through examining all these steps. But in the very beginning, when we are just becoming a seeker, I have to examine all the cause and effect. Oh, I am the real self of the nature of peace and happiness. Where is the fear? Fear cannot exist in permanent peace and happiness. My real nature is fearless. But simply by saying it will not work. So that is why I talked about this. And uh, this is uh, when I heard the news. So, so this is... And just don't pay lip service. No, I'm sorry. By saying sorry, what will happen? I will die one day. You don't know. To then whom you will say sorry, you are dead. <laughs> Whom will you say? Be practical, be pragmatic. Oh, who knows? Next session, I'm going to meet you. Or not. Whom do you say? I'm sorry. So I use the discernment and dispassion by saying sorry. I the next statement should be should help others to pacify the fear, not to increase the fear, not to increase the anxiety. That is what we teachers have learned. So, we have understood the cause of the impurities of the mind, and that is why we have the six groups of conventional practices to purify the mind. And one of them is the yajna that I discussed in detail last time. And I will follow uh, in a practical and a pragmatic approach of the yajna in our following sessions so that you can get rid of those even the uh, accumulated impressions lying in your mind. And then you will realize that how lighter you feel, how good you feel, how relaxed and calm you feel all the time. Yasna is such an important uh, application to purify the mind. So we will understand step by step. So close your eyes. Eyes are closed. And <coughs> place of the body, position of the body, and the posture whenever you talk to charlie so you just say he, she has to listen to this talk again and again and do the practice so i'll be adding some more uh, steps into the practice so first become aware of the place where you are you have chosen to practice meditation seconds point is that you find out the best position of the body whether lying or sitting whatever is more comfortable to you and that you recognize the posture 
He also recognized by position in the posture, there is no stress and struggle. So with that, when there is no stress and struggle, then you be comfortable. Again, I'm repeating, every time I give a new instructions under the same step. And if you compare these talks and practices from the different session, that is your job of contemplation and reflection. So you look at the neck joint. When I say look deep inside, look at the root of the neck joint, it means the mind is going, mind becomes aware at the subtler level and experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. That makes a sense, because now the mind has gone deeper. So look at, uh, look inside the shoulder joints, look inside you. So you may feel the shoulder joints at the, uh, the physical level, and then you're looking inside. So that looking inside helps your mind to become aware at the subtler level. And when your awareness is at the subtler level, that fear and the anxiety goes away. You look deep inside. It is the mind that moves the body. It is the mind that creates a trembling and shivering and the fear experiences in the body. So when the mind looks inside, it doesn't look outside. You have reversed the position of imagined fear to imagined. Imagine fear is gone, so you face the reality, you maintain your awareness. At this time, at this moment, there is no question of fear or anxiety. So this comes as a knowledge in the practice. So become aware of the entire body from the top, the head to the toes. Look inside the body into the joints of the neck, shoulders, elbows, hips, knees, ankles, toes. So you're looking and as if you are becoming aware of inside. The moment the mind moves at the subtler level, that sense of anxiety and the fear goes away. Even if you have those thoughts and a feeling and you continue to move the mind within, it is going to help. If it is not going to help, then we are not even a primary level of a seeker. We have to do something else. Now, being carefree is another approach. <clears throat> Any thought of the fear associated with the emotion comes. I say myself into my mind that these thoughts are separate and different from me. I am separate and different from this thought of a fear associated with an emotion. And then keep quiet. Again, the thought comes or feeling comes, you say in your mind. So say means that you recognize in the mind that thoughts associated with an emotion are different and separate from me. And that is the meaning. I have explained many a times, you are standing across a road watching the traffic. So the traffic is different and separate at a distance from you. So all these thoughts by naturally, by default, they are separate and different from me. <clears throat> but because of the imagined happiness or imagined fear, we have these thoughts associated with an emotion creates a desire, results into the impurity of the mind and causes the fear or craving or obsession. That is why we want to be carefree. See that what I discussed, I practically, huh? practically I converted into an application or a practice. So, so being carefree is a very delicate and a higher step. And gradually we will move there. So now, now, you are looking deep inside the forehead and that is another way. And uh, looking inside the forehead, 
in the space at a point. So when you're looking at a point in the space, mentally drop shanto hum, shanto hum, shanto hum, I'm the peace, shanto hum, I'm the peace, and you're looking into the space in the state of stillness in the body, and then continue to say shanto hum, stillness in the body, and start breathing quick and short breath through both the nostrils, so if we do it for a little longer period, let us do it for three minutes today. So that will also help us to get out of our anxiety and the fear. So when you are breathing in, chest expands. When you are breathing out, the chest contracts. And it will lead you to a variety of experiences of tingling, of numbness, of a variety of sensations, and sometimes we also experience certain vision and colors. We acknowledge and accept those changes, but we continue doing it. We do not stop in the middle. Why we do not stop in the middle? Because otherwise, the same thought of anxiety will take over you. Shantoham, dropping inside the head and continue breathing. Continue. Your mind will resist the breathing and you endure it. Tell your mind, I have to do it in order to change you. And then keep on doing it. Continue breathing. And if the mind resists the breathing, it says, no, I cannot do it. And still you tell your mind you have to do it and keep on doing it. Why? Because we want to transcend that mind which is still in the mode of imagined fear or imagined happiness. I believe you have understood this part. Now stop this breathing, keep looking deep inside the forehead in the space and say it mentally, I will move from the false to the real. Where is the meaning of the false? Keeps on changing. False keeps on changing. The real does not change. You continues to exist before and after the incident, after the birth, until today, 
so that you is real false is changing as fact today we have a headache and tomorrow the headache is gone so that is false i need not to identify with the false some incident happened yesterday today it is gone so where is the fear where is the anxiety where is the duality i have to repeat it again in my mind that is the meaning of moving from the false to the real and in that state we settle the mind little deeper inside by looking at the head in the neck so move your mind on the head in the neck moving the mind on the skin of the head and the neck with the weirdness moving from the false to the real we experience the sensation relaxation and stillness and looking inside the head and the neck we also find a calmness and quietness in the form of a sensation and the space when you see this space mentally say shanto hum good now look inside uh, look at the right arm or move the mind on the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips experience experience sensation relaxation and stillness first then you look inside the right arm in the space and when you see the space or a blankness mentally say shanto hum moving the mind on the left arm from the shoulder to the fingertips sensation relaxation and stillness now see you have an anxiety and fear for example the body is going to tremble or shiver or it will give you a new experience but you do not associate this with the thought of the fear so that is why i say that you look inside the left arm in the space when you see the space you say shanto hum so you cannot remove the fear by changing the symptoms the effect you have to remove the cause the root cause the root cause is the impression of imagined fear imagined craving etc etc that is why we i change the practice a bit so look inside the rib case the entire chest reason first look at the entire rib case outside and experience sensation relaxation and stillness and then you look inside your heart sensation calmness and quietness at this moment in that state of the calmness and quietness you say mentally shanto handa mantra means i'm the peace look at the belly all around experience the sensation comfort and steadiness and then look inside in the space whenever you look into the space or a blankness or emptiness we start moving into calmness and quietness and in that calmness and quietness you say mentally shanto hum So look at the right leg from the right side of the waist to the toes experience the sensation relaxation and stillness look inside calmness and quietness in that calmness and quietness or the space inside 
you just say shanto i'm so i'm repeating it again i'm putting the mind into a different state <clears throat> away from the imagined or the projected sorrow and the suffering projected fear and the obsession or pleasure consciously you are doing it so doing the practice consciously it takes you away from the fear move the mind in, on the left leg first awareness of the left leg and experience the sensation relaxation and stillness then looking inside sensation in the space are calmness and quietness then in that calmness and quietness or the space you say shanto hum and see do you really feel calmness if not you drop the shanto hum again so there may be a projected fear and you superimpose in that emptiness the shanto hum so that will stop the unsteadiness of the body and a fear that is manifesting into the body the entire body from the top of the head to the toes top of the head to the toes <clears throat> and experience the sensation relaxation and stillness then look inside we are exploring where is the fear where are you let me find out so when you look inside you find the sensation in the space. Okay, when you find the sensation in the space, you don't see, uh, is there any... There is no fear. And over on the top of it, you say Shantoha. I believe you are understanding it practically. Look at the entire body. You experience the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. All those changes in the experiences at this moment is due to the practice. Then you look inside, maybe look inside the heart. When you look inside the heart, there is a calmness and space. In that space, you say shantoham. But yes, imagined fear will return in the form of it thought and emotion and you again say shantoham again it comes you again you say shantoham and somewhere deep inside you recognize the fear is really imagined and in that state my friends you have to look at the breath going in shantoham breath coming out shantoham no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath and at the same time if still the thought any other thought comes you superimpose shanto hum gently and see what happens I'm with you, but I'm just not interrupting you into the state practice. Any thought comes, shantoham. No thought comes, shantoham, with the breath going in and out. And you recognize the imagined, projected happiness or sorrow or a pain or pleasure with reference to any object. And there you are superimposing shantoham.
You know, the last step helps us to separate every event, situation, relations, separate from us. Means I treat the event, situation objectively. And when I treat the object or the situation objectively, the fear and anxiety simply drops, even if it is a serious condition or a state in our life. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We'll share our experiences. How are you, Sophie? Thank you, Girisham. I'm very good. Very good. Very good. So maintain that state of calmness. How are you? Mead, Mead has come. Yes. How are you, Mead? <clears throat> Yes, Mead, how are you? <clears throat> I'm so grateful to you for your continuing guidance and taking us further each time. And I feel almost for the first time I could truly receive you and your Good. words and that I can keep going with this process in a more committed way. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. That's a way of being a seeker. I'm also grateful to you all because at least you are listening my gossip. <laughs> How are you, John? <laughs> hey, Girish. Um, I'm fine. I think I have monkey mind tonight with thoughts going everywhere, but I will survive. How long the monkey mind will continue? All my life. No, you have to become a seeker and get rid of this monkey mind. <laughs> so, uh, how how dare you? Your mind says, challenge your mind. How dare you say? How are you, Anne? Yes. I feel fine. I'm calm. Uh, yes, calm and relaxed. You understand that when you live inside your mind goes deeper inside it reaches to a center from where the imagined happiness or the pleasure begins and when you are saying shantoham in fact you are objectively separating it and then this fear and anxiety simply drops completely that is all for today thank you very much we will meet again next week. Thank you.